welcome back everyone my name is sagar and we are back here with another video so this is the lecture number 20 of our java and dsa course and uh, from our previous videos we learned about arrays matrices and we also did some basic questions and uh, today in this video we will be covering about sorting so sorting in 1d arrays and uh, today we are going to cover some basic sorting algorithms like bubble sort selection sort and insertion sort so without making any further ado let's get started so before starting with the video let me just show you the solution of previous task that is this task 19 and if you don't want to see this you can just skip to the main part using the timestamps and also before starting with this let me just tell you i did some mistake in this question that is this matrix multiplication and what was the problem you can see here we are going from 0 to here that was n here that was n but we have to write here 0 to columns so that was just a small mistake and our code was right before because of uh, of the input that we were taking so we have to write here rows and columns and this loop will go from 0 to n so that was the problem and i think that you just got that point if you just practice it by yourself or if you even if you just tried running some test cases on this program you must have find this problem okay so we are we were creating a matrix of size rows and columns so we have to traverse over it using this rows and columns and previously there was n so we have to write here columns instead so now let us talk about this so this was our task 19 and here we are given a binary matrix uh, so binary matrix means there are only values with zero and zeros and ones and after that we will be given a k so what is that k so find the maximum sum sub matrix of size k so we have to find a sum matrix of size k and if uh, k is 2 then we have to find a matrix of 2 cross 2 size from this n cross n matrix so let me just quickly show you how we can do this so let me zoom it first so suppose we will be given some matrix here so suppose it is for no 5 cross 5 matrix so 1 2 3 4 okay let it be 4 cross 4 so it is a 4 cross 4 matrix suppose 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 so there are total of 4 into 4 16 values and now we are given k equal to 2 so that means we have to check every matrix that is of 2 cross 2 size so this is a matrix of 2 cross 2 size that have 4 elements and let me just draw them all so this is a matrix of 2 cross 2 size this is a matrix of size 2 cross 2 size this is a matrix of 2 cross 2 so this is the third and this is the fourth so are they the only two cross two size matrix no you can see here this is a, okay what is that so this is also a two cross two size matrix this is also two cross two size matrix and there are so many of them you can see here this is also one and there is also this one this one so there are so many matrix of size two cross two so how can we check all the matrices and find the maximum value from these so what we can do we will just start iterating from the very first matrix and we will just use a normal iteration so this is our first matrix of size 2 cross 2 so we will check this and after that we will store some value in it so suppose it have four values so answer will be four so it is a binary matrix right so the maximum value possible can be four and uh, we will just store it in some variable so first this is our matrix of size k cross k and after that we will just move ahead to next matrix so this is our matrix this is our next matrix of size 2 cross 2 that is k cross k so we will just traverse over this matrix and we will just find all the values and add it and store it in some variable and after that this is our last matrix and we cannot just move ahead because uh, there is no element here so this is our last matrix and we will just move ahead in the row so this is our first matrix of this row so what can we do we will just start checking from here so we will first select this element as our first matrix first element of some matrix so we will just create a matrix of size some matrix of size k cross k and after that we will just move ahead so we will be here so 
first we were here so we will create a matrix from here that is of size 2 cross 2 so this is a sum matrix of size 2 cross 2 and then we will move ahead so we will be here and then again we will create a matrix of size 2 cross 2 and we will just uh, iterate over this and count all the values and after that we will again move ahead and after that again but uh, you can see we cannot be here we cannot create a matrix of size 2 cross 2 from here because uh, there are no elements in here so we cannot just be here so the maximum possible index will be this so we can be here and we can create a matrix of size k cross k that is 2 cross 2 so basically how can we do it we will just start iterating from this index and we will just keep increasing our index so 1 2 3 you can see here we can just iterate using this and we will just use a loop for it and what we have to do when we are on this index we will create a matrix of size 2 cross 2 and we will just iterate over it and count all the values so if you are just comfortable with the nested loop so you can do this, do this very quickly so let me just comment this So rows and columns okay so we are here taking a matrix input and after that let me just write this program so first we also need a k and after that how can we trade in a k cross k matrix so first let me write this so I 0 to K and also for J 0 to K J should be less than K and J plus plus so we have to just uh, so suppose this is our matrix and we just have to iterate over whole matrix and count all the values add all the values and store it in a answer variable so I will just create an answer variable that will be initially 0 and I will just uh, iterate over whole matrix so this will be our current answer so current will also start from 0 and I will just uh, check all the values and add it in our current so current plus equal to so a, a is a matrix from ith and jth index so I will just add all the values whether they are 1 or 0 so I will just get uh, all the values from a k cross k matrix and after that what I have to do so this is a so this is a kind of pseudo program to traverse in a k cross k matrix and get all the values but uh, i have to traverse in a whole matrix and keep creating this k cross k matrix again and again so for that i have to change these values these i and j so what we will so what we will do we will just iterate over this matrix so we will iterate over this given matrix and uh, for that i will just use x and y so x should be less than the rows and for y equal to 0 so I hope now you got this how we are iterating over this matrix and we will just get all the elements so let me just erase this first So first we need this point and we will just create a k cross k matrix from here. So k cross k that means 2 cross 2 or anything any value of k. So we <coughs> so at first we need this value and after that what we will do we will just we will just move ahead and then we will create a 2 cross 2 matrix from here and after that again we will just move ahead and again create a matrix of 2 cross 2 size. So we need this value and these are our x and y from our input matrix so first this is x and y and I will just put this loop inside here so using this x and y I am iterating over given matrix over given matrix and after this I am iterating over k cross k matrix k dot k we can say so after this line using these two loops I am iterating over a k cross k matrix and I am just count counting all the values okay 
so every time we are just starting from 0 0 index i is 0 and j is 0 but uh, that is not the case every time we will be here and after that we will be here and we will be also here so we don't we do not need to start from 0 0 what we will do instead we will start from x and y so why are we doing this because first x will be here so let me clear it so first x and y will be here so we will just iterate over this matrix this uh, 2 cross 2 or k cross k matrix and we will just add all the values and after that y will be increased so y will be here so we so y will be here and after that we will just iterate over this k cross k matrix so i hope you got this and uh, and after this point j will be again increased and we will just count over this matrix and after that j will be again increased so it will be here but we cannot just count over this matrix this matrix because it is not a matrix it only have two values and uh, there is no value in here so what we can do we can just maximize our limit for y that the maximum value of y should be this so and also for this when we are here we cannot just create a matrix of size 2 cross 2 because there is no value and we can also do the same for our x so we can also maximize the value of x to be here so that we can just get all the value of size 2 cross 2 and how can we maximize the value of x and y so that is the problem now so we know that in this case we have to create a matrix of size 2 cross 2 so the maximum possible index can be this and we will just create a matrix of 2 cross 2 and suppose if the value of k is 3 so the maximum possible index is this and we cannot just move ahead so creating a 3 cross 3 matrix so it will be like this and we cannot just move ahead when we are here we cannot create a matrix of size 3 cross 3 because there are no value here and uh, that means that limit should be dependent on k so that means the limit of x and y will depend on k and uh, we just have to do the same thing so rows minus k so that means total number of rows are 4 and minus k 4 minus 2 will be 2. So 0, this is index 0, this is index 1, this is index 2. So maximum possible index will be 2 for y and x minus k. And now it should be equal to because uh, there is 0 base indexing. So maximum index of x will be 0, 1, 2. This is 0, this is 1, this is 2. And uh, if the maximum index is this, then we can just easily create a matrix of k cross k size. And the same case for y, total number of columns are 4 and uh, k is 2. So 4 minus 2, that is equal to 2. So maximum value of y can be equal to 2. And we can just easily create a matrix of 2 cross 2 size. And after this, after iterating over this k cross k matrix, we have a value now that is the sum of this sum matrix that we are talking about. So this is a 2 cross 2 matrix. This is a 2 cross 2 matrix. And we have the value that is the sum of this 2 cross 2 matrix. So this k cross k matrix and we have to find the maximum sum from all the k cross k matrices. So what we will do, we will just initialize the answer that is here answer. And what we will do, we will just store the maximum answer possible in this. So how we can do this, we can just write here after these loops, answer should be equal to math dot max of answer and this current. So that means this is a math class, we learnt about that, let me just click here in this max so you can see here this max is a method which have two parameters a and b so these are two integers but we don't know about methods yet but uh, don't worry you don't need to know what is going in the back end you just uh, know that this is a math class and we are accessing a max method from our math class so math dot dot means we are accessing some uh, property of this math class and this is this max method so what we are doing here we are storing in answer what the maximum value out of this previous answer and this current value so there is some matrix that we traverse on and it will have current value and what we will do we will just store in answer the maximum value out of the previous value and this current value so i hope now you got this and uh, there is also a similar method called as math.min and it also have two values so you can see here so I hope now you got this how we are using this math dot maximum and storing the maximum answer in our answer. So after iterating over the matrix we will just print the answer and uh, let me just check it now. So size will be 4 cross 4 and uh, well, before that let me just write here print statement. 
एंटर के सो फोर क्रॉस फोर साइज एंड सिक्सटीन वैल्यूज वी विल जस्ट टेक दैट एग्जांपल वन जीरो वन जीरो एंड वन जीरो वन 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 जीरो वन एंड जीरो जीरो एंड आफ्टर दैट के इज इक्वल टू टू सो द मैक्सिमम आंसर इज टू बट हाउ ओके वट इज द प्रॉब्लम हेयर लेट मी जस्ट चेक दिस इज आंसर टू बट वी कैन क्लियरली सी हेयर वन जीरो वन वन सो देर शुड बी आंसर थ्री maximum answer is 3 but uh, we are having a wrong answer let me just check how okay so we are starting from 0 to rows minus k and y to 0 to col minus k so this thing is correct and answer is 0 answer is 0 and after that from x to k from y to k okay that is the problem you can see here we are iterating from y to k even when y equal to 3 k is still 2 so you can see here i will show you so when even y equal to this we are still checking for the index 2 so even when the value of our y is increasing the maximum possible value for j is still 2 and that is equal to k so you can see here j is equal to 2 so the maximum possible index for this j is this this is 2 and here j is less than k so the maximum possible index is this so we don't need that and when y is equal to 2 we are still checking if this index is less than 1 and not so i think you can see here what is the problem here so for every value of y we are moving up to kth index that is 1 because our j should be less than 2 and j should be less than k so that means j should be less than 2 so the maximum index possible is 1 and that is not what we want what we will do instead we will write here y plus k and here x plus k so that means we are starting from xth index and we are moving up to x plus k so that means we are moving from uh, you can see here so suppose this is some x index and we want to move some k index more so that means this will be x plus k and the same for y so suppose this is some y and we want to check for uh, some k values for this so this will be k so this is y and this index it will be y plus k so i think now you got this how this is y and this is y plus k and if this is x then it will be x plus k so i think now we should check again for cross 4 and uh, i will just get all these values so after that enter k so k is equal to 2 and our result should be now 3 and it is 3 so that is so that is the correct answer and uh, i think if you are comfortable enough with nested loops then uh, you should have cleared this question as such this is not a hard question but uh, you should practice this with nested loops and uh, now let us move to our today's video and that is sorting so first i will quickly create a new java class that is uh, lecture 20 so first of all what is sorting in uh, one line i can say sorting is the process of arranging our data in some meaningful order that is it if someone is saying you that sorting is called as the process of arranging elements in increasing order they are not right not totally right arranging elements in increasing order is uh, just a type of sorting you can also arrange them in decreasing order or any value that you want so first of all suppose there are some values 2 3 4 5 and uh, 9 suppose some random values so you want them to be in a sorted format so i will write here 0 and 1 uh, and uh, suppose this is an array that is a collection of integers and you want them to be sorted So first of all you should ask the order of your sorting that means either you want them in a decreasing order or in an increasing order or any specific value so suppose i am saying here suppose you have to write them in an increasing order so what you will do you will just check all the values and write them in an increasing order so 0 1 2 3 4 
8 and 16 and uh, now you can see these are in sorted order in increasing order either you can say increasing or you can also say non decreasing so they are almost similar things non decreasing and increasing but the only difference is when you have similar values two so so when there are similar values we cannot say this array is in increasing order because you can see here because uh, you can clearly see here there is this 2 and if it is in increasing order then the next value should be greater than 2 but there is also 2 so now we know we cannot say that this collection is uh, sorted in increasing order this is sorted in non decreasing order because there are also some similar values which means it is not in so increasing order so this was increasing order and uh, let me just say when we want it in decreasing order so first 16 then 8 so in this this array this collection of number is now in decreasing order or let us say if we want some different pattern different order suppose i want them to be so so this was our actual collection right so i will just delete everything else so this was our actual collection and what do we want so suppose I am saying you that I want this collection to be sorted in uh, some way that uh, first it will have odd values then even values. So there can be any order possible for your sorting which uh, makes sense to you. So first you can see here I want values. So here so here you can see first I want odd values then even values. So 2 is odd. No 2 is not odd. 3 is odd. So I will write here 3. So 4 is not odd. 8 is not. 16 is not. 1 is odd so I will write here 0 is not odd so that means now all the values are odd and after that I want to write all even values so I will just write them as it is 2 4 8 and 16 and 0 so this is a format that have first odd values then even values and these are sorted in this format so I hope now you got this what is the actual meaning of sorting it is uh, just the process of arranging your elements in some meaningful order and uh, you can just define that meaningful order according to yourself so the most basic meaningful order is increasing order or you can say non decreasing so today in this video we will just learn about that so we will be given some array that is a collection of numbers and we will just sort it in increasing order using some different algorithms so first of all there is a hack that i want to tell you so when we have some integer array uh, that will be of size suppose 5 and uh, let me just uh, write it here so so i will write them randomly so six seven some random values so there are some random values in our array and if you want them to be sorted you can just do it in one line but you can do arrays dot sort and you can just write here your array name arr and after that first let me take that import class you know about importing right you are just using some classes from some inbuilt packages right and uh, what is this arrays dot sort that means now this arr that is your input array will be sorted and uh, let me just check it so all values from my array using a for each loop and i will just print this array so what you can see the values in my array are 6, 7, 2 and uh, let me just print it before sorting. So for int i from array. So I will print all the values with spaces and after that I am sorting the array using this arrays.sort. So what is arrays? You can see here arrays is a class. So this is a arrays class. We will just learn about class in our object oriented programming. And this is a member of Java collection framework. We will also learn about this collection framework in our upcoming video. So first of all, I am writing here arrays. That means arrays is a class. And after that, this dot. Dot means I am accessing some property of this arrays class. And what is this? There is this sort method. You can see here. So you can just hover over this and you will see this sort the specified array into ascending numerical order. So ascending means increasing order and parameters are A, the array is to be sorted and there is the description of the sorting algorithm that it is using. So first of all array.sort, so we will just sort our array and we will print it. So first of all the original order of our values are this and we will just check it by printing and after sorting we will again check all the values. 
so that means the original values in our array will be sorted okay i have to just print here a new line so first of all it will print the natural order that is this which we were giving in the input and after that the sorted order you can see here the array is now sorted so you can now clearly see right all the values in our array are sorted so that is a very cool thing you can just sort the whole array using this one line but uh, you cannot just rely on this so you should know some sorting algorithm so that you can just implement them by yourself and you can just use them to sort the values and uh, there is no problem if you know some sorting algorithms you can just use it anywhere while solving your questions but uh, still why do we need to know about sorting algorithms if we have this if we can just sort our array in one line why do we need some sorting algorithms now there is this one reason because when we are using this arrays class that means we are importing this whole class and all the values but we don't need all the properties of this arrays class right we just need a one method and when we are just importing the whole arrays class the size of our package will increase and you don't need that right so instead of just importing this arrays class what you can do you can just write some uh, 10 to 20 10 to 12 i think 10 to 12 line of code and you can just sort your array by yourself so today in this video we will be learning about three sorting algorithms and the first one is bubble sort so what is bubble sort bubble sort means that we have to check all the adjacent values and that is it check all the adjacent values so what are adjacent values adjacent values means uh, these two three so they are one after the other and these are adjacent values so you know this right so what we will do so suppose we are given some example uh, four okay three so let me just write it so suppose this is our input array so let me just write it on whiteboard so suppose this is our input array 235 So what we so what is the process in our bubble sort we have to check all the adjacent values adjacent values that are together so this 2 and 35 these are adjacent values this 35 and 4 these are also 4 and 5 5 and 2 2 and 1 so there are 1 2 3 4 5 so there are a total of 5 pairs of adjacent values and we have to check them all and check karne ke baad kya karenge? okay first of all let me write here we have to sort it in increasing order so we want them to be sorted in increasing order that means the greater value will be on right side and smaller values will be on front so i have to sort it in increasing order or i can just write it here so what we will do we will just check all the adjacent values one by one so first this 2 and 35 and the only task in our bubble sort is we have to check all the adjacent values and if they are in wrong order put them in the right order so our right order is increasing order and we will just check all the adjacent values if they are in right order or not so this so first this 2 and 35 so 2 is lesser and 35 is greater so they are in the right order because 35 is greater than 2 and after that this next value so 35 and 4 are they are in the right order no 35 is smaller than 4 so what we will do we will just swap them with each other so 4 will be here 35 will be here so 4 will be replaced with 35 so 4 will be here 35 will be here and after that i have to check the next pair so our next pair is this so 35 and 5 are they in the right order no 35 is greater than 5 so they are not in the right order so what we will do we will again swap them with each other so 5 will be here and 35 will be here and i will just check the next value next adjacent values so 35 and 2 are they in the right order no they are not in the right order so i will again swap them so 2 will be here so 2 and 35 will be here so 35 and after that i will check the next pair so after that 35 and 1 are they in the right order no so again i will swap so 1 will be here and 35 will be here so after this we checked all the pairs in our array and uh, can we say our array is sorted no we cannot you can see here this is not a sorted array we want our array to be sorted in increasing order but it is not in increasing order so what you can do you can just again iterate 
so you will just check these two they are in the right order again check these two they are in the right order you can check these two these are not in the right order so you can just again swap them so two will be here five will be here and after that this next pair so they are also in, not in the right order so again swap one will be here five will be here and again check these so they are in the right order so we traverse in the array two times and can we say our array is sorted no still it is not you can see here four two one so what we will do we will just repeat this thing so we will check these we will check these okay two is smaller so it should be before four so i will just erase them and two will be here four will be here and after that i will check these pair and uh, and one is smaller so it will be before four so one will be here four will be here and after that i will check these so they are in the right order and they are also in the right order and now we iterated third time and still our array is not sorted you can see here so we will just again repeat this thing i will check these but they are now same values so so either we can just say it as this is three so they are in the right order and we will just check another pair so three one they are not in the right order so we will just swap them one and three and after that it is in sorted order so we traversed fourth time so this was four and still our array is not sorted so we will just again repeat this whole thing so we will again traverse in the whole array so this is not in sorted order so two will be here one will be here and two will be here and this was our fifth iteration so you can see here this is a very straightforward thing we just checked all the pairs and we will just check them if they are in wrong order then we will just put them in the right order so how can we do this thing we will just use a for loop to iterate over the array and what we will do we will just have i and i plus one pointer so if this is i then this is i plus one and we will check them with each other if ith element is greater than i plus one th element so suppose this is four so if four is greater than two so if array ka array's ith element is greater than i plus one th element then we will swap them so for two will be here and four will be here so we will just swap them so here it will be two and here it will be four and we will just do the exact same thing for the whole array so also one thing to notice that our last point will be this so this is ith value and this is i plus one th value so we will just compare them if ith value is greater then we will swap them i cannot be at last index i cannot be here but why because we do not have any i plus one th value so if this is i then we have to compare it with i plus one but there is no value on i plus one index so i cannot be here okay so this is a very basic thing the maximum value of i can be here that is this is our n minus one index if the size of this array is n then this is n minus one index so the maximum value of i possible is n minus two and i hope now you know this this is zero base indexing and this is n minus one index so we just have to normally iterate over the array from zero index to n minus two index and we will just check all the values if they are in the wrong order we will just put in the right order so we will just iterate from zero to n minus two from zero to i should be less than or equal to n minus two and so what is n so first let me take a input So this will be our array of size n and we also have to take input for our array right so after this we will just have nine values so we will just iterate to get all the values from input you know this thing right we just learned about this thing in our previous video so so i am not going to repeat this and after this we have our array input and we just have to traverse and check this thing if ith element is greater than i plus 1th then we will swap if array ka ith element is greater than array's i plus 1th element 
so we will just swap them so how to swap now let us see this thing so suppose there are some values this is a value this is b value and we have to swap them so suppose a is 10 and b is 20 so how can we swap them so can we write them as this a equal to b and b equal to a that does not make any sense because uh, what you will see a equal to b that means a will now hold the value of b so now a will hold the value 20 and after that b equal to a so now b will hold the value of a but you can see here b will hold the value of b so that doesn't make any sense if we update value of a then we will just lost that 10 value so what you can just do instead before doing this before updating the value of a so we were writing a equal to b so that means previously previously the value of a is 10 and now the value of a will be 20 so we are updating the value of a to be 20 and we will just lose this 10 so instead of just losing this 10 we will just create some another variable temp and we will just store this 10 in this temp variable so before updating the value of a so what you will do you will just create a temporary variable and if we will just store a in this temp so temp will be 10 now so at this moment a is also equal to 10 so a is 10 and temp is also equal to 10 and after that after storing the value of a we will just update a so a equal to b that means a will be now equal to 20 and after that we can just update b to be temp so you can see here we know that temp is equal to 10 so b will hold the value of 10 and after this line we don't need this temp anymore and you can see here a and b have swapped their values so we will just use the same thing for our arrays so what we will do we will just create a temp and we will store a value and our a value will be ith index value and we will update the ith index value to be b value so that is ith value will be equal to i plus 1th value so value on i plus 1 index and after that we will just update this b to be temp so b is i plus 1 index and we will just update it to temp so that means you can see here we are just swapping the values in this so if wrong order then then swap so using this line we are just swapping the values and we will just do the and we will just do the exact same thing for our whole array so if we have some values in wrong order you can see here four that is ith value and uh, uh, 3 that is i plus 1th value so they are in wrong order because ith value is greater than i plus 1th value so we will just swap them with each other using this thing so you can see here if ith value is greater than i plus 1th value so we are swapping it so you can see here we are traversing in the array and we are swapping all the values that are in wrong order so suppose for an example if we have some values that are in decreasing order so 5 4 3 2 1 so here all the pairs have values in wrong order and we are what we are doing if they are in wrong order we are swapping them so what we will do first we have this pair so they are in wrong order so we will just swap them so 4 will be here and 5 will be here and after that we will check this they are also in wrong order so we will again swap them 3 and 5 and again we will check this so they are also in wrong order so we will again swap so 2 and 5 and after that we will check this so they are also in wrong order so we will check uh, we will swap 1 and 5 so after one iteration so our original array was this so original values in our array was 5 4 3 2 1 and after one iteration you can see here we traversed in our array one time that means it is our first iteration so after iterating over this array one time you can see here the greatest value is on the last index that is the position of our greatest value so greatest value should be on last index and uh, the second greatest will be here so 4 will be here and then 3 then 2 then 1 so what we will do we will just again use the same thing so in our second iteration so 3 2 1 4 and 5 so you can just cross verify this thing so 3 and 4 4 is greater so 3 will be here and after that 4 and 2 so 2 will be here and after that 2 and 1 so 1 will be here and 4 will be at last index you can see so you can see the pattern here right after one iteration our one element is on the right position after second iteration our two elements are on the right position 
and after third element after third iteration our third element will be on the right position you can see here after one iteration our one element is sorted after second iteration two elements are sorted after third iteration three elements are sorted and we can just do the same thing after four iteration fourth iteration uh, two will be one will be here two will be here three four and uh, five so after fourth iteration we can see four values are sorted and there is only one remaining value and if there is only one remaining value then obviously it is in sorting order so can you see the pattern here in our one iteration we have our first element sorted in second iteration two elements are sorted in third three elements in fourth four elements are sorted or we can say the whole array is sorted in n iterations and you can just see the size of our array that is equal to 5 so we can just combine these things that uh, if the size of our array is n then in n minus 1 iterations the array will have all the values sorted so first of all what we are doing in one iteration we are just swapping all the values using this thing so using this this is our one iteration iteration okay so in our one iteration we are doing this thing and after that we have to repeat this thing for n minus one time because if the size of our array is n then we will have all the values sorted in n minus one iterations so this is our one iteration and we have to repeat this thing for n minus one times so i will just use here uh, x suppose so x should be less than less than equal to n minus one n minus one so if we are starting from zero then x should be less than n minus one and after that x plus plus and we just have to use this iteration here so we are doing an iteration and in one iteration we are just iterating over the array and swapping all the values that are in wrong order so this is our one iteration and we are iterating total n minus one number of times and uh, this is our input array this is our bubble sort algorithm so let me just check it using for each loop So first we will give some input and then we will check. So first n, n will be equal to 5 and values are 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we will just use this algorithm bubble sort and all values will be sorted. You can see here all values are in sorted order. And suppose for some another example there are 10 values and some random order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and you can see here they are in sorted order. Isn't that a cool thing? We already know about nested loops and we are just sorting array using these nested loops and uh, this is working fine but uh, let us just do some optimization. So I will clear it and suppose for an example. So 1, 2, 3, 5, 4. So suppose this is our example. So in our previous example all the values were in the wrong order but here you can see only two values are in the wrong order and what we can do we will just iterate first time and one two three so they are in the wrong order so we will swap so four and five and now we can see the array is sorted so we should stop now but instead what we are doing we are iterating we are iterating second time and we are just uh, totally wasting our time we are iterating third time we are iterating fourth time. So we are just normally iterating and doing nothing because uh, you can see here there is no ith value that is greater than i plus 1th value. You can see here all the values ith values are smaller than i plus 1th because the array is already sorted. So there is a little chance to optimize our algorithm because we are just wasting our time in iterating over the array again and again. So instead what we can do we will just iterate our first time. So after iterating the first time we know that the array is sorted. But we will just iterate over second time and and what we will check is there any value that is on ith index which is greater than i plus 1th index. And if it is that means there is some value that is not in sorted order. So if we are entering in this block that means there is some value in our array that is not in sorted order. And we are just swapping to sort the array. So that means after some iteration we have to check whether there is some value that is not in sorted order whether we are entering in this block or not 
and if we are not entering in this block that means the whole array is sorted so we will just check this thing if we are not entering in this block so what i will do i will just create a boolean boolean not entered so first it will be true and after entering in this block so not entered this variable will be false so that means so that means we just entered in the block and after this loop so if not entered so that means if uh, we have not entered in this block so that simply means all the values in our array are sorted and uh, we just don't need to swap further values so if not entered is equal to true or we can just simplify not entered so if not entered then we don't need to check further and we will just break so break so i think now you got this thing if we have not entered in this block then the array is sorted and we don't need to check further values and uh, let me just write here iteration count so i will write here uh, s out value of x so let me just uh, check it so if our n is equal to 5 and values are 5 4 3 2 1 so you can see here first there are values of this x so 0 1 2 3 so that means we are iterating over the array four times and uh, let me just uh, and let me just write here line so we are iterating in the array four times to get the whole sorted array and uh, if we check for another case if we are checking for this case so one two three five four so we just have to iterate one time so you can see zero one so this is our first iteration and this is our second iteration and after that we are not iterating anymore we just break out of our loop and this is because in our first iteration we are just sorting all the values and in our second iteration we are checking if we are entering in this block or not and if we are not entering we will just break after this so that is it about bubble sort and uh, let me also tell you that it is one of the worst sorting algorithm and uh, why because uh, you can see here we have to traverse in the array again and again and also we are checking every adjacent pair that either they are in the wrong order or they are in the right order and if they are in the wrong order then we are just swapping so let me also tell you with the example we are taking so we were taking example this 5 4 3 2 1 so you can see here we optimized using this thing so if we have not entered then we will just break out of this so so this was our optimization of the algorithm but still it is one of the worst because uh, let me show you so 5 4 3 2 1 so you can see in this algorithm what we are doing we are just checking every adjacent pair and if they are in the wrong position then we will put it in the right, right position so we will check this they are in the wrong position so 4 5 then we will check this uh, 5 will be here so we will check 5 and 3 so 5 and 3 are again in the wrong position so 3 will be here 2 will be here 1 will be here and after our first iteration 5 will be here 5 will be here in the desired position that is the expected position of 5 because 5 is the largest greatest element in this array and the expected position of the greatest element in the array is the last position because we want our array to be sorted in increasing order so this is our first iteration uh, so after iterating our array one time we know that the last element is the, is at the desired position because uh, we want the greatest element to be on the right side to be on the left index right in, uh, last index okay so we know that after first iteration our one element is at the right position and we can also see that after second iteration this four will be this four is greater than three so we will swap them three will be here then four and two four is also greater than so two will be here one will be here four and five so you can again see here two elements are on their desired position after our second iteration and the same thing will go on so after third iteration we can see here 3 is greater than 2 so we will swap them 2 will be here 1 will be here and 3 4 5 so we can see here after after our third iteration three elements are on the desired position that is now three elements are sorted and uh, you can just uh, follow the same pattern so we can say that after our first iteration one element is sorted after our second iteration two elements are sorted after our third iteration three elements are sorted after uh, three elements are sorted from end so we don't need to check them anymore but we are still checking them because after our fourth, fourth iteration what we will do 
after our fourth iteration we will first check them with each other so four and one they are in the wrong position so what we will do one two and still after this we will check uh, after this we will also check further elements so we will again check this is two and here it is three so we will check them if they are in the wrong position or not but we know that after this point all elements are already sorted but we are still checking them so that is the worst part we are doing we know that the elements are already sorted and we are just checking them again so first we will check this 2 and 3 they are already in the sorted position then here it is 4 here it is 5 and after this 2 3 we will check 3 4 uh, so if uh, this is ith element this is i plus 1th element so we will just uh, checking them again and again so either they are in the wrong position or not but they are in the right and after that we will again check this so we are doing this part unnecessarily so we are just checking them again and again and that is the unnecessary part we are doing so we will just skip this part and uh, how so let me just tell you we will optimize our algorithm a little more so how we can optimize so this is our zero iteration we can say so at zero iteration we know that uh, okay let us not say it so you can see here at our first iteration at our first iteration we can see <coughs> At our first iteration, we can see the last element is in the sorted order. So at our first iteration, the one element at the end is a sorted order. So we don't need to check them with each other because we can just guarantee that the last element is in the sorted order and it will be not less than this. So we don't need to check this pair. So after first iteration, we don't need to check the last element. So, so after first iteration, we don't need to check the last one element. And after second iteration, we don't need to check the last two elements. And after third iteration, we don't need to check the last three elements. And for fourth iteration, we don't need to check the last four elements. And uh, yeah, last four elements. So that is it. We have to make some changes in our algorithm according to this. So in our first iteration, we don't need to check the last element. So this is, okay, you can see here. We are starting from zero. So for our zeroth iteration, we have to check every element, right? So we also have to check this last pair because they are in the wrong order. So we will make it in the right order. So we can say it as in our zero iteration, we have to check all the elements or we can say we have to skip the last zero number of elements. So last zero number of elements that doesn't make any sense. But here it will make sense because we will now say we have to check all the elements by skipping last one element. So we will not check these. And after this, we have to skip last two of last two pairs. So we will not check this. We will not check this because they are already in the sorted order. You can see here 4 and 5, they are in the sorted order. And after third iteration, we don't need to check the last three elements. So we will not check these three. And after fourth, we will not check these four. So that is it. Uh, you can see here x is our iteration count. So we will just rename it as uh, iteration count. Iteration count. So I will just call this iteration count. So what we have to do, we are checking all the pairs every time using this loop. So you, you can see here, this is our one iteration and what we are doing, we are going from zero to n minus two. So let me clear this a little bit. So every time what we are doing, we are going from zero to n minus two. So this is our last index. Let me write it here. So this is our last index and uh, this is n minus 1. So we are going up to n minus 2 because uh, we have to check the pairs. This is ith and this is i plus 1th. So at our first iteration, we have to just skip the zero element from last. So what we will do, I will write here minus iteration count. And uh, first iteration count is 0. So I will just go from 0 to n minus 2. So I will start from 0 and go up to n minus 2. That is here. So we will just check every pair. And after our first iteration, iteration count will be increased. And after this, I will go from 0 to n minus 2 minus 1. That is maximum value of i will be this. So I will check this pair, this pair, and I will be also here. So it will compare it with i plus 1. So that is it. And after another iteration, after our second iteration, uh, iteration count will be again increased. So iteration count will be 2. So n minus 2 minus 2, n minus 4 n minus 2, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4. So I will only compare these values. So it will check this, it will check this. And that is it. So using this, we are just optimizing our code a little bit more. And uh, let me just check it. So I will take the same example. n is 5 and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
so you can see here we are iterating four time and uh, our array is sorted now and uh, let me check for another case so one two three and five four so we have to only iterate two times because at first iteration what we will do we will just swap them and after second iteration we can see here there are no more swaps to do and we will just break so we will not need only two swaps we will not need only two iterations and you can see zero iteration and first iteration and that is it about bubble sort so it is one of the worst sorting algorithms still it is one of the worst sorting algorithm and that is because the time complexity of this bubble sort algorithm is n square in worst case and uh, so you don't know about time complexity right but uh, don't worry we will have a separate video on that topic it is a very important and interesting topic time complexity so don't worry we will just create a whole video on that and after this this was our first algorithm and after that i will comment this and uh, now let us move to our second algorithm that is selection sort so selection sort what is that it is a little bit optimized algorithm than bubble sort and uh, let me tell you what it is so selection that means we have to select something and uh, here also the same we want our array to be sorted in increasing order so increasing order so what we have to select so let me take an example here so this is selection sort that means we have to select something from our collection and uh, what we have to select when we want our array to be in increasing order then we can either select the minimum element and the maximum element and we will put that in the desired order so what what i am saying suppose for an example here uh, just some random example one three four five so suppose this is our example so i want my array to be sorted in increasing order and this is selection sort so that means i have to select some value from my array and what will i select i will select in this range the minimum element and i will just pick that minimum element and put it in the first position and why because we know the array is sorted in increasing order so that means the minimum element will be on first position and the maximum element will be on last position so either you can do it like this you can select the maximum element and put it in the last position or what you can do you can just select the minimum element from the range and put it in in the first position so let me also write it here so we will select the minimum and put in the first position position of our range so that is the main thing of our range so let me clear it to you so we have to select the minimum element and put in the first position of our range so first i will select this range so we know that whole array is not sorted and we have to just traverse over it and select the minimum element so what we can see where you know how to select the minimum element right we will just uh, we will just uh, create a variable and store the minimum element in it so what we can do we, we can just select the minimum element after iterating in this range we know that the one is minimum element in this range from 0 to n minus 1 so this is n minus 1 index right so we traversed in 0 to n minus 1 and we know 1 is the minimum element so what we will do we will put 1 in first position and how can we put we will just swap the values so we will get the index of 1 from this array and we also have to store the index right so we will also store the index so this is 0 index first index second index so index so i will say it as uh, on index 2 it is 1 here right so so it is equal to this so error of 2 so that means on second index and uh, and now we have to swap it with the first position and in this case our first position is zeroth index so we know so now we know so now we know we have two values that is the first position this is the first position and the index of our minimum element so we will just swap them with each other you know swapping right we just did that uh, you can see here this is swapping we will just create a temp and swap the values so after doing this thing what we can see here one will be here so one will be here and two will be here so one will be on the desired position that one is the minimum element and it should be on the first position so one is on the desired position and two will be swapped here so we can clearly see here one is on the desired position and this part of our array is sorted so we don't need to check them anymore so now we will check for this range so we will just repeat the same thing we will just get the minimum element and we can see here minimum element is 2 
that is on 2th index and uh, we will just swap it with the first position and now the first position is 1 index so we will just swap the values that is on 2th index and first index so we will just swap them so 2 will be here and 3 will be here so so after this so after this we can see here this part is sorted so we don't need to check for this and now we will check in this range so we will just repeat the same thing we will just get the minimum element so minimum element is 3 and we will just swap it with the first position and you can see the first position is the 3 itself so index of 3 is 2 and the index of first position is also 2 so that means we don't need to do anything because after doing something we just have the same output so after swapping 3 with 3 we will just have 3 so either you can do it or you can skip it there is no problem with that so after this we have to check in this range so we know that the this part is now sorted and we have to check in this range so we will get the minimum element so minimum element is 4 and the index of that minimum element is uh, what is that index 0 1 2 3 4 so index of minimum element is 4 so we just so we will just swap this 4 with the first position of our range so that is the thing i am saying select the minimum element in the range and put it in the first position of our range so that is the thing about selection sort and uh, let me just tell you how we can do it in code so first of all we can see here so suppose i will take some another example so suppose my example is this 5 4 3 2 1 so at first i know my range is from 0 to n minus 1 so i have to first check in this range and then my range will be increased so suppose this is i then after one iteration i will be increased so i will be here and my range will be this and after again i will be increased so i will be here and my range will be this so i have to keep decreasing my range so i will again increase so i will always increase okay so so that is the thing we will just create a variable i and we will increase it every time and what we have to do in one range so suppose if we have some range so this is our range for some i and what we have to do we have to first so first we have to get two elements the one that is on first position and the one that is minimum element we can just get the first position right because it is i itself you can see here i will be here so it will be the first position and my range will start from i and after that i will be increased so it will be the first position of my range so first position is i so we know that and after that we want minimum element so how can we get minimum element from some i to last index so how can we get so this is the range from i to n minus 1 so we have to get the minimum element in this range and how can we get minimum element simple using a for loop we will just iterate over this range and we will get the minimum element so first let me write it here so our range will start from this i2 and minus 1 so i will use a loop j will start from i2 j should be less than n minus 1 so uh, n minus 1 equal to okay because n minus 1 is our last index or we can just say j is less than n so that is the same thing so now we will just iterate over the particular range and we will get the minimum element we already learned about how we can get the minimum element in our previous video if you don't know just check that out so i will just create here a integer dot max value so we already learned about this thing what is that this is integer class and we are accessing the max value that is the maximum value of integer so that is this 2 to the power 31 minus 1 and after that what we will get we will get is ith index array is jth index and we will just compare it with minimum so minimum equal to math dot minimum of okay i will just call it uh, no problem min and error jth element so what is this so we are comparing every single element with our minimum and uh, this is also another method from math class we already learned about that in today's video itself so what is going on here you can see here i am using this math.min so this math.min is a method which uh, we can use to compare two values that is uh, we will return the minimum value out of these two so minimum will be equal to math.min okay you will get confused in this so i will write it as minimum value in the range so i think now this thing is clear 
so i will get the minimum value in the range so first we don't know about that so we will just say it is the maximum value of integer class so that is 2 to the power 31 minus 1 and you know why we are taking it right we already know about these things from our previous videos right and after that we are just iterating over the range so i will write here iterating in the range and what we are doing we are just comparing every element so we will get the minimum element out of these two so we will get the minimum value in the range with this current element so what we are doing here so first i will say this minimum element is equal to infinity so minimum value in the range is uh, first infinity so i will get infinity and after that i will just compare all the values that this arr of j so this is our current range and every time we will just compare this minimum value with this current value so first i am comparing this infinity and this 5 so infinity and 5 which is smaller 5 is smaller you can see here so this will return us 5 so this math dot mean will return us 5 because uh, it will return the minimum value out of this infinity and this so it will return us 5 and we will just store this 5 in our range so minimum value in the range is 5 now so i will just update it and 5 will be here and after that j will be increased so we will check this so after this we have 4 so we will just compare this is 5 and this is 4 so 5 and 4 which is smaller 4 is smaller so this math dot mean will return a smaller value so 4 will, 4 will be returned and we will just store it in here so after this 4, 4 will be returned and we will just store it here and after that 3 is smaller so 4 and 3 which is smaller 3 is smaller so we will just store 3 here so I think this is a, you are comfortable with this thing this is a very basic thing and after that we will just iterate over whole array whole range and we will just get the minimum value which is 1 so after this array we have the minimum value out of our range so we have this one that is the minimum value in the range but uh, we also need the index right so we need the index of this one so we will just create another variable for this index of minimum value so first uh, it can be anything and we will just update it so we don't use this we don't need to use this so uh, what we can do if this current value error of j is our current value in the range and we will just compare it if it is less than our minimum value in the range then what we will do first we will update the minimum value to be error of j so this thing is the same thing we were, we were doing that is math.bin so after this we know that this current element is less than this minimum element so it is now the smallest element so we need the index of smallest element so we will just store this index so index of minimum element will be this j so I think now you got this how we are storing the index of minimum element to be j. So what we are doing we are just iterating in the range and what we are checking we are checking if this current element is less than our minimum element in the range which was previously minimum. So we will just compare every element if it is the smallest then we will update it. So the smallest element will be now this and we will update the index of minimum element. So index will be equal to this j and after this point after iterating in the array one time what do we have we have uh, minimum value to be 1 and index of minimum value will be j so it is in case so it is here n minus 1 so it is the index of our minimum element which is stored in this so after that what we have to do we have to replace this value with our is value so after that what we have to do we have to place the smallest element in this range to be at the first position of the range because uh, we want our array to be sorted in increasing order and that means the smallest element will be at first position so we will just do the same same we have the minimum element and we have the index of minimum element so we will just swap it with the first position that is the ith position so we still need to create that i so what we will do i will just start a loop for this and i will start from zero so first this will be our range you can see here this is our range then i will be increased so this is our next range and after that uh, this is our next range and then this and after that that is not necessary we don't want to create a range for only one element so i equal to zero i should be less than n so i'm just writing it normally so i will put this whole thing inside this array this loop so what is going on here so you can see here first what we are doing we are creating a minimum value in the range so our range is at starting our range is this so let me erase this so at starting i is here and our last index is n minus 1 and at starting our range is from i to n minus 1 
so our range is from i to n minus 1 and we are iterating over the array and we are getting the minimum element and index of minimum element so we get this minimum element 1 and index is n minus 1 and after that what we have to do we have to swap it with the first value in the range so first value in the range is at ith position so we will just do the swap we will just use the same thing so we will just use this thing copy and uh, paste so first we will store the ith value before updating the ith value and at ith value we will just put index of minimum value and then index of minimum value will be this temp so i think now you got this how we are swapping the values so at first before updating the ith value so before updating this 5 we don't need to lose this 5 right so first we will store it somewhere so temp will be this 5 so i will write here temp will be equal to 5 so first we will store this 5 and after that ith value will be equal to the minimum value or yeah either you can say here minimum value or you can just use this thing so so i will write here the minimum value in the range so this will be the minimum value in the range so at ith index now we have the minimum value in the range and uh, so one will be here and after that what we are doing we are we are just doing the swap thing so what we are doing we are just putting five here that is temp so arr of index of minimum equal to temp so that means five will be here so one and five are swapped now and uh, that is the thing what we are doing so so this was just our first iteration and we have the minimum element in the first position and after that i will be increased so after this it will be our age this will be our age and we have to again repeat the same thing so this is our range i is here so what we will do we will just start a loop from i to n minus 1 i to n minus 1 and uh, we will just get the minimum element and index of minimum element so minimum element is 2 and index of minimum element is 1 2 3 so index of minimum element is 3 and minimum element is 2 so we will just swap the things with the first position that is on the ith position so 4 will be here and 2 will be here so 2 will be here and 4 will be here and now you can see the array is sorted so you can so you can clearly see here there are a total of n number of swaps for our array and lesser number of swaps are there then according to this bubble sort and in bubble sort we are just taking every pair and we are just swapping and swapping so this is a kind of bad thing and this is a little optimization from bubble sort so that is it about selection sort so it is a little optimized algorithm than bubble sort but still the time complexity of this algorithm is n square so just remember this thing for now and when we are talking about time complexity we will just cover everything in detail how the time complexity of selection sort is n square and also bubble sort n square and we will just cover everything so this was our second sorting algorithm and so this was a little optimization from bubble sort so after this let us move to our third algorithm that is insertion sort so this is our third algorithm so it is insertion sort that means we have to insert some value and uh, let me clear it first so insertion sort means that we have to select some value and insert it somewhere so what does that mean so i will create an example here so suppose uh, 5 4 or 3 4 so suppose this is our example and insertion sort means that we have to select some value and insert it in the right position. So in this algorithm we will just start sorting our array from beginning and what we will do we will just select some element and put it in the sorted order in the given range. So suppose this is our range so we will start from 0 so we will just get the 0th element and we will just put it in the right position but if there is only 0th element and our range is this so there is currently no element in the range so it will be the position of this 5 and after that our range will be increased so our range will be this so after that we will just get this element and we will just put it in the right position in the range so our range is this and what is the right position so first of all before putting it we will just store it somewhere like i can say temp equal to this 3 so we will create a temporary variable for 3 and we will just start checking what is the right position of these 3 so we will just start checking all the elements in the range so first this 5 so is 5 is greater than 3 yes 5 is greater than 3 so 5 should not be here 5 will be swapped with this so that means 5 will just move ahead we are not swapping here remember this thing we are not swapping we are just moving ahead the position of this 5 so 5 will be here so 5 will be here 
and after that we will just check the next element but uh, there is no element in the range so what we will do we will just put this three on the index that is uh, next to when we are stopping so so we are stopping here so that is the index minus one and we will just put this three on minus one plus one that is on zeroth index so this thing is a little complex but uh, don't worry let me just write it here first so we will just put this three here and after that this part is now sorted so firstly our range was this so our range will be now increased so our range will be this now and uh, so this is our range so after this after next iteration this will be our element so we will create a temp and we will store this for here and then we will just start checking all the elements in the range so first of all we will check this 5 so 5 is greater than this 4 so 5 should move ahead so 5 will be here so 5 will be here and after that we will check this 3 so we are starting from here and we are just decreasing our index for checking so after this we are checking this 3 so 3 is greater than 4 no it is not so that means we should stop now so whenever we get some element that is smaller than this temp so we should stop so we will stop at some ith index and after that what can we do we will put this 4 on i plus 1th index so i is this index and we will put this 4 on i plus 1th index that is this so we will just put this 4 here so 4 will be here and after that so so this was our third iteration and our range is again increased so so after this we will check this element and create a temp so temp will equal to 2 now and we will just start checking all the elements that are before that so 5 is greater so 5 will move ahead so 5 will be here and still there is 5 and after that we will check 4 so 4 is also greater than 2 so 4 will also move ahead so 4 will be here and after that we will check 3 so 3 is also greater than 2 so 3 will be here so 3 will also move ahead so 3 will be here and after that this pointer will again decrease so we will be at minus 1 so when we are at minus 1 index we will just stop and we can do the same thing we will stop at some i and we will put this 2 at i plus 1th index so we will put this 2 at i plus 1th index so this is some i and we will put this 2 on i plus 1th index that is 2 will be here so after this iteration our range is again increased so our range will be this now and uh, after that we will just repeat the same thing we will create a tab that will be equal to this value and after that we will just start iterating for all the values that are before it so what we will do we will just check if this is greater then this will move ahead so 5 is greater so 5 will be here and uh, after this we will check this 4 so 4 is also greater so 4 will again move ahead by one step so 4 will be here then we will check 3 so 3 is greater so 3 will also move ahead so 3 is here and after that we will check 2 so 2 is greater so 2 will also move ahead so uh, and again after that we will be at minus 1 index and uh, we will stop now so this is some ith index and we will put this one at i plus 1th index so i is this and i plus 1 is here so our one will be here so one will be here and our range is this so after this we will stop it rating because uh, now you can see our array is sorted so now there is a lot of things to observe but uh, let me just tell you everything one by one so what we are doing in our algorithm we are selecting some current element and we are checking all the elements that are before it so we will just have some ith value and we will store this ith value in some temp so a of i and after that what we have to do we will have some range that will start from i minus 1 index and we will just move ahead up to minus 1 and when we are at minus 1 we have no index to check so we will just break so we will have some i index and for that we will start checking from i minus 1 to until 0 or until minus 1 so first i will be here and we will just check all the values that are from i minus 1 and we will put this 4 in the sorted order and after that this i will be increased so i will be here then we will have the range from i minus 1 so this is our i minus 1 so we will start checking from this i minus 1 until 0 so what we have to do we have two loops here so this first this is our ith index then this is our ith index then this is our ith index then this then this so at first we need a loop for i so we will just use outer loop for i and after that what we are doing 
so let me just write here so first loop is for i and after that what we are doing suppose this is our i and uh, let me just write here 2 4 5 so this is our sorted range so this is our sorted range and we have i here so what we are doing for some value of i so what we are doing we are checking from i minus 1 until 0 so we are just using some another loop that is from i minus 1 to 0 so let me just write it first so for first this outer loop that will go from 0 to last index for this i so int i equal to 0 and uh, the last element will be i should be less than n so this i loop will uh, go from 0 to n minus 1 so first i will be here then here then here so we will just keep incrementing our i and for one value of i what we are doing we are starting another loop to check from i minus 1 to we are going up to i minus 1 to 0 so we will just use here another loop that will be j so j will start from i minus 1 and uh, go up to 0 so j will start from i minus 1 and uh, will go up to 0 so j should be greater than equal to 0 and every time j will decrease so that means we will be first at i minus 1 then i minus 2 and we will go up to 0 so all these things are clear now we are starting a loop for i and for one value of i we are checking from i minus 1 to 0 and what we are doing if this value is greater then it will move ahead if this value is greater then it will move ahead so that means we are checking some jth value so if jth value so first we will create this temp so this temp will be arr of i so before this loop temp will be equal to arr's ith element so temp will be equal to arr of i and we will check if this element is greater than temp so if this jth element is greater than temp so what is going on here we will check this 5 so here it is 5 so we will check if this is 5 is greater than this 3 yes 5 is greater so it will move ahead so this is some index j and we are moving ahead the element of this index so what does that mean so this is index j plus 1 and this in index j so that means the element on j plus 1 index will be equal to j so arr of j plus 1 equal to arr of j so i am writing this thing arr of j plus 1 equal to arr of j so that means this is our j plus 1 index and this is our jth index so i am writing arr of j plus 1 equal to arr of j so that means i am updating the value of j plus 1 index so j plus 1 index is this and i am updating the value so 5 will be here and after that j will decrease so after that j will be here so i am again checking the jth value if jth value is less than greater than temp so 4 is greater than 3 yes it is so it will again move ahead so this is j plus 1 so j plus 1 value will have the value of jth index so 4 will be here so 4 is here again and uh, so after that j will be here and we will just check if this value is greater than temp or not and if it is not greater than value else what we are doing we are just breaking out of our loop and we are just putting the value here so else we will just break so break and uh, and after that we know that we have to put this temp here because uh, that is the desired position of 3 and how can we put here we are breaking at some j so we break at some jth index and we have to put our temp here at j plus 1th index so first we need this j so instead what we can do we can uh, declare this j out of this loop into j and uh, and you can see here i am declaring this j out of this loop and i am just initializing it here so that means i can still use this j out of this loop so you can see here when i am breaking out of this loop so i can still use this j so what i have to do i have to put this temp on j plus 1th index so error of j plus 1 will be equal to temp and that is it so this is my temp value that was previously 3 so i am putting it on j plus 1th index so this is my j plus 1th index and 3 will be here so that is it and uh, and that program is now completed so let me just do a dry run on it dry run means we are just checking our algorithm on some example test cases and we are just normally iterating so example was 5 3 4 
to 1. So suppose this is our example and first i is equal to 0. So i will be here and what we are doing we are creating a temp. So temp will be equal to so temp will be equal to 5. So t equal to 5 and after that we are creating some j and j will be equal to i plus 1 i minus 1. So we are starting j from i minus 1. So if i is 0 then j will start from minus 1. So j is here at minus 1 and j should be greater than 0 but it is not. So we will not enter in this block because j is equal to minus 1 and j is not greater than 0. So we will not enter here and what we are doing. We are just accessing j before initializing it. So that is a problem. We cannot use any variable if we have not initialized it. So first we have to initialize our j and uh, that will be equal to i minus 1. So we will not do it here and uh, that is also a valid syntax. So that is totally your choice. We are using here a for loop. You can use here a while loop. That is the same thing. So at our first iteration j is equal to minus 1. That is 0 minus 1. j is equal to minus 1 and we will not enter in this block. And after that what we are doing? We are updating the index j plus 1 equal to temp. So j is here. j plus 1 will be here. So j plus 1 equal to temp. So this is the same thing. So that simply means 5 will be again here. So temp is 5 and error of j plus 1 is also equal to 5. So either you can do it or you can just use a condition to skip this part. So that is not a problem. So after that i will be increased. So let me erase this. So i will be here now. And after that our j will start from i minus 1. So i is here. So j, j will start from here. And uh, our temp is equal to. Our temp will be equal to 3. So temp is 3. And after, th and after that we will just start checking up to 0th index. So this is our 0th index. And we will check if this value is greater. Then it will move ahead. Yes it is greater than 3. So it will just move ahead. And after that j minus minus that means j will decrease. So j will be at minus 1 index. And after that we will just break out of this loop. And we will update the temp value to j plus 1 index. So j plus 1 index is this. And we will put this temp here. So after that 3 will be here and 3 5. So we will just repeat the same thing for all values of j. I will be here. I will be here. I will be here. And we will just check every element if this is greater then move ahead this is greater then move ahead and we are just doing this thing error of j plus 1 equal to temp so i think now you got this program how we are doing a swap and selecting one element so that is all about insertion sort let me just uh, print all the values from sorted array So let me check it now. So n equal to 5 and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And you can see here array is sorted. And I think we forgot to check for this selection sort. So we will also check this. I will just use the same thing. So for selection sort we will check if this is correct or not. So for some bigger example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And you can see here this is the sorted array. So that was the part of our insertion sort and now let me just elaborate all this. So yeah time complexity of insertion sort is also of n square. And square so all of these three algorithms have equal time complexity but uh, don't worry we will just learn about time complexity so so now let me just write here what was all that so first of all we learned about bubble sort so what is bubble sort just remember one thing bubble sort is the worst algorithm and we have to check all that just in value so if someone asks you what is bubble sort then you have to just remember this thing we have to just iterate over our array again and again and we have to just check adjacent values so we so we are checking adjacent value and if they are in the wrong order we will just swap them and put them in the right order according to what order of our sorting we want so bubble sort was this this is the worst algorithm and we will just check adjacent values and after that selection sort so 
so selection sort means we have to select the minimum value out of our range minimum value of range and after selecting the minimum value we can just put it on the first position and put on first position or what you can do in selection sort you have to select some value that can be minimum or maximum if you are selecting the minimum value then you have to put it in first position because if we want our array to be sorted in increasing order then first position should have the minimum value so either you can select the minimum value and put it on the first position and you can select the maximum value and put it on the last position so that is also called a selection sort so it is just a technique to sort the array you can just implement the thing by yourself either you have to select the minimum value or the maximum value so here we want our array to be in increasing order so minimum value should be on first position and in case you want your array to be in decreasing order then you can select the minimum value and put it on the last position because uh, if we are putting on the last position that means last position have the smallest value and first position will have the greatest value so that means our array is in decreasing order so you can just modify the algorithm according to your needs and after that this was selection sort select the minimum value and put it on the first position and after that we will talk about insertion sort so insertion sort means that we have to insert some value so insertion sort means that we have to choose some current value and insert it on the right position before it so choose and insert on the right position position so also here either you can just start choosing from the first or you can just start choosing from the end and you have to change your algorithm according to your needs and now it is time for your practice problem so today in your task 20 what you have to do at first you will be given an array so just take an array from input and at second step you have to sort it in decreasing order using all three algorithms so today we learnt about three algorithms that is bubble sort selection sort and insertion sort and you and in your task you just have to use these three algorithms and sort your array in decreasing order so today we learnt about how we can sort array in increasing order but you have to sort the array in decreasing order just uh, share your code in the comment section and you will get a huge shout out in the upcoming video so that is it for today everyone if this video is helpful go hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching